So today I'm going to talk to you about Capture One Pro 11. So I've just become an ambassador for Capture One Pro 11, which is pretty amazing. And the reason it's come about is a few months ago, I um, I kept on having issues using Lightroom and the Adobe solution in terms of tethering. And I always tether when I shoot portrait. And I've devised a offer some inspiration from some other photographers, a, a travel case that allows me to take my tethering solution outside of the studio and tether wherever, wherever I end up shooting effectively. The problem with the Lightroom solution is with a Sony camera it wasn't great so I was trying to find a solution that was better than using Lightroom and I came across Capture One and I used the trial and I was absolutely blown away by it. Um, I then put up a video talking about my solution in terms of the Teva case and the software I use and, and why I use it and I started a conversation up with the guys at Capture One which then led into me becoming an ambassador which is pretty amazing because I can now offer a 10% discount on on Capture One software which is amazing so if you are in a position where you're considering it and you're still not sold what I'm going to do is a brief kind of uh, run through of the features that I love from Capture, uh, Capture One Pro 10 and the new features that are involved in Capture One Pro 11 and there are some really amazing new features within the, the next version of it which is great so if you are considering making that change I'm going to give you kind of a bit of a guide to some of the new features that are within that and also give you an exclusive discount that should help save you some pennies when you make the purchase. Okay, for the guys that don't want to sit through the video and just want to get straight to finding the discount code to help them save some pennies, this is how to go about doing it. So if you were to go into products for instance, we'll go to software, any of these, you know, we'll go to capture one, fantastic, okay, so we want to purchase, that's great you would download the software but in order to activate the software so what you'd have to do first is download the package and you can have a 30 day trial once you've downloaded it as stated up there but when you get to the point where you would like to purchase it what you would need to do is go to store and it will ask you where you want to go for store so we're going to click into capture one pro do we want to subscribe or do we want to buy? So optional to you, you can use either of those. Say for instance, we, for this demonstration purpose, it's easier for me to go in and show you buy. So you would click into buy and then it will give you the type of licenses that you want. So do you want a multi-seat license? So you've got five computers that can be activated or do you want just a single user? So for this instance, we'll say single user and it asks us single user, multi-user and obviously the price that reflects each of those. So we will add that to the cart. Fantastic, cool. We've now got that in the cart. So we need to go to the checkout at this point. So we head over to the checkout and depending where you are in the world it will show you either euro sterling dollars so on and so forth so at this point here this is where we're going to put in the code so the exclusive code to use for myself is a m b all capitals luke so a m b l u k e now what you have to do from this point here is you can see as I change the cursor over the top it gives me the indication that I can click it so if I click that there we go our voucher key is added successfully so what you'll notice there is the price has changed from 279 to 251 euros so you know you've got the 10% saving on there we would click agree we would then go to continue and information and you can use that on any of the, the software so if you are currently a Capture One Pro 10 user and you want to upgrade to 11 use this code and it will give you 10% off so you'll save some cash when you make the upgrade and to be completely honest the upgrade is so 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 worth it if you have any questions about how to go through this please pop them in the comments and I will happily help so 
I'm going to take you on a little walkthrough of Capture One Pro 11. So to start off, probably the first thing to show you is what I've got here is my tethered sessions. So this is basically an external hard drive that I connect to my computer when I shoot tethered. All of my files are directly saved to the hard drive, so I never keep anything on the computer itself. And I then save that as my Tether sessions, and that's where I'll use to store all the information for Capture One. So nothing is ever really stored on my desktop, and the reason I do that is for risk mitigation. And it's if I'm out shooting on location, I would use a couple of hard drives with a script running on running to replicate the data on both the hard drives and that way it just ensures if anything goes wrong with either of those I've got a backup and, and it keeps me a little bit safer so all of the data you see is being pulled from the hard drive currently at the moment so without any further ado if I go into Capture One Pro so this is a session that I shot with a guy called Jack and he's he's a DJ so we were using sort of some extreme clashes of color and we're shooting it low-key uh, just to give you an idea on the, the style of shoot, as you can see here, the whole session is over on our right hand side and I can scroll up and scroll down through the images. I've picked these ones because I think in terms of the impact from the shoot, these are the, the, the most impactful. We, we built the creative up, you know, we, we worked on a range of looks and slowly started to get to the point where we were happy and this was the look that we were going for. So this is the ones I'm gonna show in this demonstration because I think they're pretty powerful and yeah, I'm pretty happy with them in terms of the, the end product. So to start off with, I'm just going to talk you through some of the panels up here and then I'll start to go into some of the more, you know, the new features within Capture Pro 11. So to start off with here, this is my library indicated by this panel here. Now, my sessions are always saved as sessions um, and, and that's basically, so if I, I can create a catalogue, which is, you know, effectively a whole album, but what I want to do is create sessions and those sessions are a tether session. So every time I shoot with a new client, those tether sessions can be found in here. So I can see a range of clients and, and I can also browse through to find, you know, additional ones that are on the hard drive. Now, the thing you'll find at the moment is, at the moment I've only got two. Now that's because everything else was previously shot in Capture One Pro 10. When you want to import those to Capture Pro 1 11, you have to update them so they will work with the new functionalities of the new software. So you can only see two there because I've only done two that have updated to use the new features within Capture Pro 11. So if I look through here, what we can see is my capture folder. Now, this is the folder that the images that are tethered fall into. I also have a selects folder, which is images that I've select, and also an output folder and a trash folder. So any images that I'm not happy with during the shoot, I can bin them, but they won't throw them away. I can refer to them at a later date, which is a great functionality. Also output, so I can define, you know, once they're edited within this software, they will go into the output folder and, you know, I can see what's captured, I can see what's going out. So in terms of client feedback, it's phenomenal because we can see what's being captured because we're tethering and it's all live. But as we're sort of going through marking them, I can put them in the output folder and they're there for retrieval later. What I also have underneath here is session albums. And this is pretty cool. So if I was to... So these two guys at the moment, they've been starred. Now, if I was to scroll through and find another image, so say, for instance, this one here, and I hit that as a five star, what's going to happen is they'll automatically go into this folder here. Now, this is very useful, especially when you're, so say, for instance, I shoot with uh, DJs and musicians. If they're ever sitting with an agent, I would use uh, Capture Pilot, which is another feature of this software, which I'll talk to you about a little bit later. They would have access to an iPad that would replicate the data that we're shooting on the iPad, so they have full visibility of what's going on. What they could be doing is they could be marking the images that are falling through on the iPad, either a one, two, five star. So my workflow afterwards is massively reduced because I automatically know the images that they're happy with because they've been following the process all the way through and marking what images they do and they don't like, which is a phenomenal feature, especially when you're tether shooting and, and a feature that I, I, I couldn't live without now, if I am completely honest. So... The next one from here, if I move along, 
you will see so this folder is basically designed for a camera and at the moment you can see that there is no camera attached but if I was to just just hold that thought for 10 seconds just so I can show you how responsive it is as a software what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my Tether Tools cable and I'm literally plugging this in as we speak so I'm going to plug this Tether Tools into the side here and I'm going to connect it into my A7R2 as we speak now and power her on so bear with us two seconds just got to get it all untangled and plumbed in as they say Right, brilliant. So I'm literally plugging it in now and I'm switching the camera on. So allow it a few seconds to load up and there we go. So straight away I have got instant feedback in terms of my camera and the information so I can tell what camera it is. It's got no lens information currently but what my shooting, you know, all of the shooting settings. I can also shoot from here so I can decide if I want to shoot from here which is phenomenal. Now I don't really want to shoot from here and add anything into this collection so what I will do is that was just for demonstration purposes if I scroll down to the bottom here uh, is it going to load through? Okay, no, it hasn't thrown it in. That's cool. Hasn't added that in. Okay, so let's go back to where we were. Uh, cool, we're in. So we're going into the camera section. So as you can see, as soon as I've plugged it in, direct feedback in terms of the camera being connected, which is absolutely phenomenal. And from here, all of this stuff is is related to the camera. So you know I obviously I can get feedback from the camera but if I am tethering you know I want as much information available to me from the computer as possible so I can control from the computer the comfort of a larger screen um, with more accurate and also I can share the settings with the people I'm talking to so you know we, we can go through things in so much more detail which is absolutely phenomenal if I go into camera focusing I can you know there's so much I can do and the thing I was talking about earlier is capture pilot now Capture Pilot is an awesome bit of software, an, an awesome bit of technology. So what effectively you would do is if you went up into the top here, you would um, create a network. So your MacBook would, and this is only available on ISO, so Apple and, and Macs and stuff. So you would create a network. Now once you create that closed network, you can then connect that network, you can then connect an iPad to that network. I've got a video of this previously in demonstration, but what would happen is, Capture Pilot is a, another piece of software, part of the Capture One Pro family. And what it will allow me to do is transfer the images that I'm shooting directly to an iPad in real time. It's phenomenal. And this is how I will set all up here. So I can basically, you know, where is it going to? Do I want it to publish to a mobile or web? So the web is phenomenal. If you say, for instance, you're shooting on a really huge commission and, you know, the artist, you have them directly in front of you, but their management team are in another country, you can create a web browser, a, a proprietary web browser that they would log into and they would be able to have the images uploaded to them straight away. So they could be on the other side of the world and they can still have access to these images, which is phenomenal. And this is one of the reasons I moved away from Lightroom, because this here, in terms of what I do as a photographer and the workflow that I need, this is unbelievable. And there is nothing else out there that I find comes anywhere close to it in terms of being able to deliver and being efficient in delivering because you know you can there's some softwares out there that, that claim to solve problems and they really don't, but Capture One 100% does and it's, it's so rich. Capture Pilot is a feature that I absolutely love. As we move further in, you can see some of the other functionalities. And the great thing is, you can see here, so I can choose from a range of cameras, which is phenomenal. So if I was going to go at the moment, I'm shooting on a Sony. So the lens attached is the 50mm 1.8. So I'll see if I can find it. No, my luck. It's probably the one lens that's not going to be in here. Uh, there we go. That's the one. So I could click that lens here. And that's, you know, I can manage the ceramic abrasion. I, I can just, there's so much that I can do, you know, through this piece of software. It's phenomenal. 
And the great thing is, all of these bars, they're totally customizable. So if I don't want that there, I can drag that up. If I don't want it at all, I can literally remove it. I can add tools in. So that was my lens distortion, lens correction. So, so I can add that in. I can drag it back up to the top. So it's totally customizable in terms of how you lay it out and you need it to be laid out for your workflow. Then you can move on, and here is going to give us the ability to start to manage, you know, start to manage the colors and start to manage the image to make sure it's coming out where you need it to be. Some of the things we can do, so I've got, this is really cool in terms of how it works. Now, as you'll notice, as we move up and around, it starts to manage the colors, which is slightly different from what you would have in Lightroom. So in Lightroom, you have a slide and scale in here. This is, you know, circular and you would move to, you know, the closer you get to a color, the, the more intense that color would be and the more rich it will be. So you can also control it through here, which is great. And that's going to be the same thing as like utilizing a tone curve, for instance, in Lightroom. So if you wanted to add that matte effect to the image, you would have the ability to do so. And again, all of these are customizable as ever. We're moving a little bit further. So here, you know, what I would probably say is between these two options, I have histogram twice. So what I'd probably want to do is remove histogram from one of these guys. And you have the option to do that. And that's just making sure that the layer is specifically custom to yourself. I can increase my brightness. So I went for a really moody shot. So one thing I would probably do is want to go to increase my exposure just slightly, bring up the clarity, which is you know very very simple stuff that you would normally see in Lightroom, and just punch the saturation just a little bit, not too much. So you can start to see you know it's very similar, and I'm not losing anything as I would you know transitioning from Lightroom to using Capture One. The layout is so much easier to use once you get used to it. Of course, everybody's so familiar with using Lightroom, the learning curve is quite difficult. It's pretty much like going from PC to Mac, but invest some time in it and you will be able to understand it and use it. So now just talking about some of the features within Capture 11, which I'm, I'm really impressed with. So if I go into here, it's now layer centric. So you don't have local adjustments, you now have layers. And I can add layers very simply. And I can take layers away. The great thing is with this is whatever adjustments I make on each of these layers, I can increase the opacity of those adjustments, which is great. So probably not for this image here, but if I was doing a landscape and there was huge variance between the colors and you know the tones and everything within the image, I could create a couple of adjustments. I could tweak them. If I was finding them too rich, I could just pull down and pull up the opacity. What we can also do within that as well, which is with another feature, is we have the ability to feather mask and refine mask. So these are really useful in terms of, you know, wanting to pull out the detail of the hair, for instance. If we wanted to do that, we could use a feather, which would be a little bit softer, and we could use a refine, which is going to pull the edges of those hair, and, and you know, it's going to make it look a bit sharper and crisper as an image. And these are new features. Again, if I want to get rid, it's so simple and straightforward. One of the other features that I really like, really, really, really like, is I'm going to go to Add Tool and Annotations. So I can go into here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look into this image. So we zoom in. Let's have a little look. Wait for it to load through so you can see the detail. It's just sort of buffering that information. There we go. We're in. Now, if I was going to send this image off to a retoucher and there were some parts that I, I wasn't massively happy with, what I would do is I would identify those parts. Okay, right, do you know what I like? I do like that. I would keep those there, for instance. But if I wanted to, say for instance, get rid of this guy here. So what I would be able to do is choose my tool around there like so. And I could then color code it with a green spot. I could then go into this bit here. So right, I want to do that, but with a blue spot then send a key index to my retoucher and saying, okay, green spots, I would like to be healed, blue spots, I would like to be cloned. And, and you, you can basically do this with the whole image. Um, I'll just take those bits away, bear with us two seconds. 
So I can start to, and this is allowing us total collaboration between yourself and a retoucher. Now I do most of the edits myself, but if I was going to send the edits on and I still wanted to keep control over that, this is the functionality I would use to, to be able to do it. Some of the other stuff you have within there as well is export uh, crop to path. And that's pretty useful. So say for instance, I was to crop this image and I then finished the, the edits within this image. I would get the cropped image, but I would also still keep the original if I wanted to adjust it at a later date, which would be great. So I'm never losing anything. I'm not cropping and that information's gone. So bear with us two seconds. We also have duplication checker. So we also, oh God, here we go. So we also have duplication checker. So duplication checker now is great in terms of making sure we aren't, obviously it's, you know, it, it's in the name, duplicating images going into Capture One Pro. So if it does come across an image that is a duplicate, it, it's so much, it's scrutinizing it so much more to make sure there aren't duplicates of those images within the software, which is great. Another couple of things are color improvements. So the transitions through the grade, the transitions through colors and the gradients of colors are so much more improved and so much more subtle. So it means your color handling is, is far better. It's a lot faster as well as a software. Like I find it, you know, it's so, so, so much faster um, in comparison to the first one, just so much easier to use. So that's kind of a little bit of an overview of the reasons I like Capture One Pro and you know some of the new features in Capture Pro 11. Some of the other stuff as well we have is you know here we have our styles and our presets. So we've got built-in ones or we can add user-defined and you can purchase these from Capture One Pro online or you can create your own so you can build your own custom presets which are, which are awesome especially if you have your own style. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of how this is all laid out. Again, if you have any questions, please pop them in the um, comment section below. Happy to answer. Remember, if you're interested in purchasing this at checkout, use the code AMBLUKE, all capitals, for 10% discount. 